Hello my dear sewing friend, it's Elisa here and I'm really happy to see you. And today we are back to one of my favorite topics and that of course is upcycling. I'm really excited because as always we're going to take something that we no longer wear and perhaps is collecting dust at like in the corner at the back of our wardrobe and we're going to give it a second life and make it into something useful. Now episodes about upcycling dresses, sweaters and button up shirts will be linked below but today we're going to be upcycling skirts. I have a really pretty lacy one over here. I have one that is from my office work days. I have a couple of handmade ones so we'll see what we can do. First up is this jersey skirt that I made probably close to a decade ago. And I actually think I was featured in Berta Style magazine for this one. If I find that magazine, I will pop it on the screen for you guys. I used to wear it and I actually really love the design. I think it's subtle yet quite interesting and as you know, I like that kind of stuff. But in this very particular season of my life, I don't know, for past couple of years, I'm really not that into wearing skirts or dresses. And as you have seen, I've been upcycling them on my channel. So I think I've been holding on to this one for so many years as a keepsake for nostalgic reasons, but it actually does absolutely no good. It just sits there on a shelf and I maybe took it out once or twice for video purposes because I wanted to show this insert and this ruching panel made from chiffon. But other than that, I haven't worn it, so I think it's time, right? I have a couple of ideas of what I wanna do with this and what I will actually wear, and I think I'm actually going to start by cutting this all apart. And here I sometimes see that with upcycling, it would go with the most obvious route and maybe not the most wearable route. So for example, with a skirt, I could have turned it into a tube top, right? But the problem is that I don't wear tube tops. So really taking a garment that I don't wear and transforming it into another garment that I will personally never wear doesn't really work for me. So I just wanted to mention this, and I know that I've said that in the past, when I do upcycles or when I sew for myself, I do what I will actually wear. So as always, you have to do what's right for you. And I truly hope that you get inspired by these ideas, but as always, modify them to what fits and suits you. everything apart I ended up with a lot of tiny pieces because the skirt itself was made from six panels and because of that my only choice was to make something that is going to be also made from little panels. The only problem is that this gray jersey isn't really anything special by itself. So I really needed the start of the show. And I had a little bit of this white lace on hand. So I thought if I combine this white lace with this gray sweatshirting, it might create a very interesting effect. I'm going to start with a simple self-drafted sweater pattern that I'm going to use as a base. And here I find that the most difficult and time consuming part is actually figuring out how to arrange what I have and if I have actually enough fabric for this whole entire project. So as of right now, this is what I'm thinking in terms of how to arrange all the little fabric pieces and put them together. And you know, hopefully by the end of this project, it's going to look like a really fun, sporty sweatshirt with lace details. Okay, so I'm going to put the front pattern piece together and then I will figure out the back. And in the front, we have a lace insert right down the center front. And then we have lace shoulder yokes and actually no side seams because I simply don't have enough fabric for it. So we will see how it all plays out in the end. Now this entire project will be done on my serger since I'm working with knits, but sewing machine will do just fine as well. Now here's what it looks like right in the middle of this upcycle, sort of like the in-between step of the front pattern piece. And here's what it looks like on the back. So you can see the lace is backed with beige colored knit and I also top stitched that as well. And moving on to the back pattern pieces, that's where fabric actually got really, really scarce. So for the back yoke, I had to get creative and assemble it from five little pieces. And then for the back bodice, well, 
the original idea was to do a lace back, but when I actually pinned it together, I went, oh, <laughs> no, 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 no. So I went digging in my fabric scrap bin and I found this old project that was already cut up and the fabric here is very, very similar. So I thought, you know what, this is a sign and I replaced the lace panel with this gray jersey. The sleeves were made from the lace and for the band for the sleeves, I used the waistband from the skirt. And after all finishing touches are done, let's take a look at the final result. One, two, three, ta-da! <laughs> so let's take a closer look. We have a cropped length over here, which I think works for both, for the design itself and for the fact that I didn't have much fabric to work with, so I couldn't really make it longer. Then of course we have a soft V neckline, which I also think adds a little bit more openness to the whole design. And then, no side seam. As you can see, there's a side panel, but there's no side seam because I had to finagle the pattern pieces in such way so that it would have enough fabric for everything that I needed. Then of course in the back I have these little panels but I actually think that it doesn't really add too much choppiness to the garment because in the front I have these panels as well and top stitching and same goes in the back so I kind of think it works really well together. Overall, I think it has that sporty, romantic vibe to it which is definitely right up my alley and for me that's definitely a winner. Now for this next project, I really want to use up that beautiful lacy skirt that I showed you at the very beginning of this video. And that skirt was passed down to me from a friend who was also cleaning out her claws and that was like years ago. So it's like trickle, 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 bam, we're finally upcycling that. Now that skirt is, it's quite mini and I can kind of still squeeze myself into it, but I can only stand, I can't sit down. Because <laughs> if I sit down, it's definitely going to crack down the seam. So I think it's definitely time. The overall idea is to create a slightly fancier top for special occasion by combining the lace from the skirt and white woven fabric that I have in my stash. And for that, I'm cutting the skirt apart. And while we're doing that, here I want to add that I definitely, 100% for sure, I swear, <laughs> I did not plan to do two lace projects in the same video. In fact, when it kind of came to it, I was like, oh man, two lace projects side by side, both of them are upcycles. That's kind of like, you know, one trick pony. But then I thought, well, I don't really have any other skirts that I want to upcycle. So, it, you know, it is what it is. And maybe it's a good thing because I feel that lace oftentimes is just used in one way. A lot of uh, evening wear, a lot of lingerie, but maybe this is going to give us an opportunity to take a look how lace can be used in two completely different styles, in two different garments combined with two different fabrics. So it might be interesting. Now for the pattern base, I will be using my self-drafted pattern of the, exactly the same top that I'm wearing right over here, but just a single layer sleeve and also without any flutters. As always, I have all of these tutorials available on my channel and I will link them for you guys right underneath this video. The skirt consists from two layers. The first one is the cotton lining and then of course the nylon lace. And my first thought is to use the pretty scalloped edge as the accent down the center front of the blouse and then I can use the rest for the sleeves. Now to get that done, I cut off that beautiful trim and then figured out the placement. Now one side I was able to stitch down on a sewing machine, but the scallop trim had to be done by hand. This definitely was a little bit of a time consuming part, but you know, it had to be done and I think it was well worth it. Now, take a look how it looks from the inside of the garment. You see all those little hand sewn stitches. Now for the sleeve, it should be a little bit easier because all I want to do is just to take a piece of lace and layer it on top of the fabric. So it's going to be the same pattern piece. But here I needed to carefully trim off the netting away from the lace itself. And just to be sure, I also applied a little layer of fray check right on the edge of the lace. After that 
I was done, all I had to do is to treat the two layers of the sleeve as one and attach them to the bodice and pretty much finish the top. <laughs> as in, in essence, it is just a simple raglan sleeve top and fabric is what really makes it special. Now in the back, I made a keyhole opening as well as the hook and eye closure so that way it's easier to pull it over your head. And the neckline was finished with a little strip of bias tape, which was also partially stitched down in the areas where it met the lace. Overall, not a difficult project, just a little bit of hand stitching and of course a bit of your own imagination. So let's take a look how it came out. Both projects are made with lace, but what a big difference from one to another, just depending on how we combine that lace with the other material that we're using. So here, I definitely feel that this is a much dressier option than for example, this one. I am really, really happy with how this turned out and it's definitely going to get a lot of wear for the special occasion days. Now, as for the fabric, I used 100% triacetate twill, which was structured enough, which I liked, but also lightweight enough to be able to use it for a blouse. Now, in your case, you can use silk, you can use poplin, you can use cotton and linen, depending on what kind of lace you're using. So definitely, possibilities are endless and you can use a variety of materials for a project like this one. Okay, so for this next upcycle, I actually want to try something a little bit different. Here I'm thinking about using the cotton lining from the lace skirt, but first I gotta jazz it up a little bit and I have just the perfect idea for it. I'm not sure if it's going to work out, but we will see. So recently, about a couple of months ago or so, I tried block printing for the first time and I'm telling you, it was, it was like magic because you start with a plain piece of fabric and you end up with a fabric that has a really fun pattern on it. Now there, I was working with block printing ink, but I don't have any anymore, so I've been thinking what if I mix fabric medium with acrylic paint and then use that on my blocks? So we'll see if that works out. paint is dry, now I have to heat set my pieces of fabric and then we can start working with them. I have drafted a very simple summer top for my daughter and that is what I'm going to use as a base. Now as you can see here, I don't really have quite enough fabric in order to make it as long as I need it to be, but for now that's alright because I think I have a really fun idea up my sleeve. I'm going to cut two sets of pattern pieces. One will be from the block printed fabric and the other one will be from a really lightweight white cotton because both of these cottons are super lightweight and a little bit see-through. So combining them both together is not going to be too thick but will provide enough coverage and will also make for a really nice finish because I'm going to be using the burrito method. Basically, it's a really neat way how to finish neckline and armholes with all of the seams enclosed in this all-in-one lining. If you haven't tried the burrito method by now, but let's say you're having a little bit of trouble finishing necklines and armholes of sleeveless garments, then I would definitely recommend it. At first, it kind of seems a little bit, I would say, fiddly, but once you get it, it's really easy and I have a very detailed video that will explain step by step what to do, how to do it, and the best tips and tricks in order to achieve the cleanest result for this technique. Now here you can use any other technique that you like or that you're comfortable with because at the end of the day, we're just making a simple sleeveless top. So you can use any pattern that you already have, you can modify a pattern, or you can draft your own, whatever is best for you. But once my top is ready, I have one final step to add and that is drum roll, <laughs> this really fun fringe hem.
Now I had this shrimp for many many years now so I thought this could be a really great and fun way to use up what I already have on hand and I still have a ton of it left maybe for another project but here I'm just pinning it to the bottom of my top overlapping at the ends and that will also make the top a little bit longer. In order to attach this trim, I'm just using a simple straight stitch and my guess is that my little one will absolutely love the fun movement of the fringe. So let's take a look at the final result. fun and I'm kind of I'm a little bit jelly that this top is not for me but for my little one so maybe maybe I'll make one for myself in the future. Now I have another skirt upcycle where I turn two skirts into a really cool jacket so if you want to see this video click right on your screens and I will see you in that next upcycle and thank you so so much for watching I truly hope that this gave you inspiration and ideas and also some new techniques to try and until until next time, happy, thoughtful sewing. I'll see you very soon. Bye!